Hi everyone. This video is part of a series designed to help people playing the game Squad, specifically the Squad Leader role. The Squad Leader experience in Squad is really unique as far as most shooters go, and personally, I find it very rewarding. The reality is that many Squad players find the Squad Leader role very intimidating, and the point of these videos is to help current and aspiring Squad Leaders better understand how to play the role effectively and decisively with the ultimate goal of winning a match. In this series, I'm going to try to break down my thought process on key decision points because the decisions that you make, rather than the accuracy with the gun, it usually defines the effectiveness of a squad leader in this game. I'll also tell you right now that you're going to see me make mistakes and errors of judgment. Part of improving at anything in life is understanding when mistakes are made, hopefully by evaluating what I think are good decisions and what I think are mistakes. It helps you improve your own game and understand how to be effective in this role. Real quick on my own background, I've played squad for a few hundred hours. I play as the squad leader role for about 90% of my games. I do have a philosophy on what good squad leaders should be doing, but rather than go into that, I'll just say for now that I'm strongly influenced by the techniques and strategies laid out by in the squad leader guides by Captain, one of the members of the squad community. I'll link his channel below. His videos were instrumental for my own development as a squad leader, and if you're interested in squad leading, I couldn't recommend that enough. Future videos won't have as long of an intro, but this is the first one, so I wanted to set the stage. Let's get into the match. So, one of the important things to understand about squad and squad leading is that it's definitely a smart idea to develop a philosophy on how you want to lead your squads, but it's also really important to understand the nuances and the way that individual maps play out, because the maps will dictate a certain play style or is a flow of play to a large extent. Real quick, let's take a look at this map, Lashkar Valley, and talk a little bit about how it will play and how even a, a new squad leader could kind of intuit some of these uh, dynamics. This is the starting state of our team in this game on Lashkar Valley, and there are two important things to note here. One is that this game and all of the action will largely be taking place on the west side of the map. We can essentially ignore the east side for putting up fobs and, and having a lot of people come over here. That's not going to be necessary because everything that's going to matter for winning the game is going to take place uh, on largely on the west side of the map. Uh, we can know that this is how it's going to go from a tool called Squad Lanes. I definitely recommend every squad leader use squad lanes. It's very helpful. And uh, the alternative to it is trying to memorize the flow of every layer in squad, which is not a great use of anyone's time. So um, props to squad lanes. Definitely recommend anyone use it. Uh, the second thing to note is on Lashkar Valley specifically, there's a couple of defining features of it. One is that there are a lot of curvy mountainous roads. Uh, you'll see, you know, up here... Uh, here, these areas, right, is very, it's, when you actually are driving on these, it's very steep and very curvy, easy to tip over a truck, easy to mess that up. And I think the other the final thing to know about where how the road layout is, is that uh, in, because these are steep mountains and it's very hard to drive outside of the roads on here, it creates a lot of natural choke points on this map that either side can exploit extremely effectively. I think this map is one of those that if you can get a stranglehold on the other team supply lines, you can significantly impact their effectiveness. And so for us, you know, those choke, hold, those choke points are going to be places like here um, and this general area. Um, and then, you know, something like here, if you wanted to go farther up, it would be this line. Uh, for the enemy team, if we were able to control like this choke point, um, something central, and then, you know, something that might prevent them from getting a flank, you know, even over here. Like, we could essentially lock down their entire team and force them to go this, like, long way around. So controlling these supply lines is really effective in this game, and it can frustrate uh, who, whatever team it's effective at. It can really frustrate the other team. So... That dynamic is going to play out in this game, so that's why I'm calling attention to it. So that way we can kind of understand how that will affect your own decisions and how that affected the, the choices that I made in this game. There is one last thing that is really important to understand, and that is that we are insurgents fighting the Canadians. 
And that means that insurgents get two points pre-captured right at the beginning of the game. So this point is going to be our first point that we can capture, whereas the enemy team, this point is going to be the first point that they can capture. So at this point, if they're using squad lanes, which I always, I always assume that the other team has all the same knowledge that I have, so I don't assume that I have some edge on somebody. At this point, they're not sure if it's going to go, if the map is going to go to the west, to the middle, or to the east. So we have the knowledge that this map is going to go to the west. They're not sure yet, and that means if we can get a, an effective start, we can really clamp down control of some key areas, including, crucially, like this intersection. Uh, which will essentially prevent them from being able to get to two of their, you know, the next two points. Uh, so if we can do that effectively, we can have a very strong start before they even know what hit them. All right, guys. Let me get either Point in this lodgy or yep, gun truck is good to go. Pancakes. <laughs> so either get in with me or the truck that turtles in. And, uh, Turtle, I need you guys to handle the back cap if you can, please. Alright. Thank you. Appreciate that. I like the SL full blueberry squads, meaning I don't play with clan members or friends who know me in my style. So most of these people are hearing me for the first time. There's a couple principles I keep in mind. One, get on the mic early and establish comms with your squad. Two, be assertive on what you want to do and to give your squad a sense of direction. That is your responsibility as a squad leader. The third is to be polite and be nice to people. Uh, remember, people are playing this game to have fun. So when you ask people to do things that might not be super exciting, like build a structure or capture a point, instead of jumping into the action right away, make sure to thank them. Guys, I got backpaps. Y'all go do something else. I was actually going to volunteer to do backpaps this time. I haven't done one yet. I'm Commander. I want a backup. It'll make, make my life a lot easier. Sounds good. Sounds good. People aren't taking the SPG trucks, right, which are, are no very important. Capping, this so we're gonna go together. Why don't you take a look? Oh, there's one person that's okay. All right, guys. This skin. map is a western map. They, we are going to the west. The next, uh, the fourth and fifth points are marked with flags and then habs. So that's where this is gonna go. The next point after that's gonna be where like that mine mark is. If you're going to take a technical, take the SPG. So we need to take everything over to the west, except anything that we want to maybe mine up on the main road. When it comes to backcapping, I try to avoid tying up not just my, but any of the team's logistics capabilities handling backcap. I think it's a big waste. Remember, most of the action is going to take place in the western part of this map, and the more that we can get people and fobs to that side of the map early on and to the midline, the easier it will be for our entire team for the rest of the game. The early game is the only time you can advance to a midline of control without fear of contact, so it's really vital to take advantage of it. In this case, the commander said that he wants to take his squad to do backcap. I generally don't like to argue with people a lot on this game, so I'm fine to just let him do that, and I'm just going to redirect my guys and adjust. All right, guys. Um, real quick before we start, who wants fire team lead? Oh, never mind. Never mind. Me, please, uh, boss man. Mwah. I'll take it. No, 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 no. Me. Oh, you can let can him I have it. Can I Benadryl on my fire team as well, please? Yeah, I'm going to split you all up in a second. Um, who is the other person? Sorry. Oh, yeah. Marksman. Marksman. Okay, cool. Real quick, I always get fire team leads in my squads. I typically just ask the squad repeatedly until I get people that step up and do it. Uh, it's helpful for a couple of reasons. One is just making marks on the map. You're already doing a lot as a squad leader. You don't wanna to have to always make marks on the map every time someone spots an infantry. Uh, second, it encourages more participation and more ownership among the squad. If other people know that they should be making call outs as a fire team lead and helping to direct the rest of the squad. So it's a little thing, but even with pure Blueberry squad, I found it's very helpful. And Blueberries actually do a good job on the whole of making marks and, and using the fire team lead role effectively. All right, Wallah, so baby. check your map real quick. That this map is going to the west. All the the marks out with the flags, um, the habs. Um, that's where this is, is, is map is all going. Is so the fourth point is where the flags are. The fifth point is where the habs are. Don't all this shit on the eastern map. Don't worry about that. So we're gonna need to get over there quick. We ideally take this intersection. That's been marked. Anti tanks, you guys should honestly just chill in that intersection. 
And then uh, we do a little good. bit of praying. I'm putting y'all uh, into fire team so you can pass it among yourselves up, as you need. Go ahead and get on the road. Take a left. Basically, just gonna follow everybody. Are you all right, bud, buddy? Right. Let's, let's uh, have that tactical end squad, and this logic stick together. How come, how come we're not taking the big logic? Big I'm grabbing it, I'm grabbing it. Yolo, yolo. Wow, we're lost. That's tall. Remember when I said how important it was that we take an early positional advantage at the beginning of the game? That's because the developers have determined that the other team has such a big advantage over our faction, the Insurgents, that they should give us a two capture point lead to start. So every second that we are not taking that positional advantage at the start of the game is a second that we're falling behind. The fact that I flipped my Laji due to some stupid driving is a big setback. Take that technical up, we flip the Laji, take the technical up, and hold that. I had told my technical to stick with me at the beginning of the game. Now that we've flipped, I want him to just keep pressing on to the move point. So that's why I told him to keep moving on. Hold on, let me help. Anybody know? What's up? No idea. I have no idea, bro. Let me find out eventually. Sure. But I want to bomb it now. Alright, go ahead. Sorry about that little delay on the truck. I'm just gonna suicide and wait for the hab. That's fine, yeah. That's pretty normal. A lot of servers do that. Really? Yeah, it's like an easy way to support the uh, hosting costs. Yeah. If you can't spend the $60 a month to host the server, don't host the server. <laughs> yeah, you know, you got the server, you got the website, the Discord. People are wars out there. Dude. We're going to get like a Firebase pop on each force, just so that I can re sure. the vehicle. Yeah, uh, I can do that. And that's if you don't use it. You lost it. I'm sorry. That technical is going to go way faster on the roads than uh, where you all are at. You'll notice I bring up my map a lot when I play. That's because the map is the single most important tool that a squad leader has to make decisions about the flow of play and where they want to go next. So in this case, uh, you know, we had had that early Laji flip. So ideally, I'd like to be up where the command squad is now, around there. Um, he's placed that early fob. He also said he was going to handle back cap. Actually, I actually think that fob is in a fine location um, to ensure that our supply lines can be at least a little bit more protected. Uh, so I'm actually totally cool with that position. Uh, even though he's not right on the back cap immediately. Um, in kind of more unfortunate news, our technical in my squad has for some reason decided to drive in the mountains instead of staying on the road. Uh, I don't know why he did that. I w thought I was pretty clear about asking him to move on to the mark. But for whatever reason, that didn't get through. He decided to drive through the mountains. Now, I've seen a lot of squad leaders like yell at people or you know or just start to berate them or demean them about you know, decision making skills or whatever there's no point to doing that now like that's not going to help this technical get back on track any faster so just let try to do a gentle correction there keep moving on with the play here My whole squad's stuck in the ground. They can't move. Oh, shit. Move the vehicle, maybe. There's two LEVs over here, and we're, we're fucked. So several bad things just happened in really short order there. And I'll try to go through each of them. One is we spun the Lodgy. That's actually the least bad of all the things that just happened. So it's no big deal. We'll move on. Uh, second is the commander said that for one reason or another, some of his guys are stuck 
in the ground. Uh, that's a glitch. Uh, it's pretty rare, but I have seen it happen before. Um, but that's obviously you don't want to be down people when you're trying to get that early position. Uh, the third is that he just said that there's two LAVs on his position. So the people who are on there are going to be completely suppressed and destroyed in pretty short order. He's just said that they are fucked. So, you know, they are losing that point most likely. Uh, the third is that we actually just drove by a enemy striker. If that striker would have stayed on the road that we were on and we just met head on, he could have easily destroyed us and completely screwed up our plans. We got really lucky that for who knows why he decided to go off road and he just missed us, I think. So we are sneaking past them. Essentially, things have gone from bad to worse. He's directly up the hill from me. Right over here is a, what's it called, loud. Oi, go. I see enemy chopper. Right, right can I light her up? Yep. Enemy to our left. Don't cross the right. right, I won't make it to back cap, by the way. We have to stop at LAV. Just want to set you up for back cap. There's an enemy right across. Squad 3, can you go to back cap? You only hope 3. Right there, we were just requested to s redirect our squad to capping the first back cap. And I'm purposely not responding because I'm honestly not sure if I want to agree to that yet. Uh, I don't know that I can get my logic truck in there if we're already being forced off the point by LAVs. Uh, we They already clearly have a very strong uh, forward position on us. And if I were to send this truck into there and lose it, it would be really devastating to, I think, the overall ability of uh, our team to win the game. So I'm letting that hang for a moment. I probably should have responded and said, uh, not sure, let me get back to you. I'm looking, you can tell me, I'm, you can tell I'm looking at the map and, and considering my options, but right now, I'm just not sure that I want to commit to bringing um, the Lazi truck over to the back cap just to, for the sake of getting it as quick as possible. I'd rather get forward position and have mid control than necessarily get an er fast back cap as fast as we possibly could with a high risk of getting destroyed. Um, also, you're going to see some really atrocious driving. I'm actually usually not this bad with driving. I think I'm pretty decent overall, uh, but I'm just really making several mistakes here. And again, every second that we are uh, not getting that mid position, that we're wasting time running into walls or people getting killed or whatever, is a second that we are falling seriously behind on this map. So I'm a really worried right now that we're not going to be able to even establish a decent foothold, and they might be able to steamroll us at this point. Enemy chopper flying north of us. Alright, there we go, we made it. Well, the good news is you're probably not about to get marked. <laughs> yeah, there's a vehicle coming down the road vehicles? to the north of y'all, just going past this bridge. Yeah, they're putting up a tow fob. They're putting a tow fob up near I-3, guys. Uh, you also got a hostile helo circling around. Oh my god, this is not good. Oh, never mind. It's just... You guys who are with the technical, can you guys please move to cap Joman? There's no one else that can do it right now. You wanna come in? Oh, that's kind of you didn't have to wait, I was just scouting for you. <laughs> can anyone get to the Joman? I can't get there. I I'm fucking just, got I'm having by these three guys working on it. Copy that. Right there, we just decided to kind of split the difference. I noticed that the guys in the technical were out of it for whatever reason. Maybe they flipped it or something, I'm not sure. But I asked them to push into the next point. Uh, they were the closest people to that point anyways. And w since we don't have any other folks close, and we don't have any information about what's going on there, better to have some people going in. Even if they die, it gives information to the team and gives them the ability to, you know, to move into that situation with some awareness. Uh, ultimately, I want to stick to the original plan of getting mid control. I do realize that at this point, we've wasted so much time in the beginning of the game. They have such a strong advanced position that we need to just get something down. I'm redirecting to this point on the west, you'll see, because I am uh, worried that they might already be advancing to that critical intersection that I pointed out earlier. And we just need some type of spawn down, some type of mid control down, because if you look at the map, no one else is even close to a position to do that. I am worried right now that if we get too aggressive and we try to stick maybe with the original mid control point, we'll get killed and then we'll be back at square one. So this is my way of, of trying to adapt us to a less than ideal situation.
this moment also reflects a concept that I kind of started thinking about in Squad called decision points. Uh, these are critical points in the game where you can make uh, where a decision could materially change the way that the game flows and, and goes. And at this point, I could choose to take my Lodgy into the back cap, maybe the, the more conservative option. Um, but it is still, I know it is still dangerous. And so that I, could, I could try to go all in on back capping the point, or I could stick with my original plan of mid control. Now that Both of those options are going to lead the game to play out in very different ways. And ultimately, I have to decide what is going to be the best thing for the game in the in the long term what's going to put my team in the best position so this is one of a few key decision points in the game and you'll see how it, how it plays out as time goes on what's, what's the status, status of the jumping cap it's like 75 percent okay great as, as soon as, as that, that uh half up that i just put down come on back, back in the truck we gotta keep moving, moving. Hey, who put that hat kit up in the east there? Is that accurate there? Yes, that is. I just got blown up one tap by it. Fuck. Uh, that can't be that good. All in? Yeah. Uh, it's one. Yeah, I glitched. Come on, I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm, I glitched or something. Perfect, alright. Thank for back capping. Good job on the back cap. Just make your way over here as you can. Alright, I'm in. Okay. Alright, I need one person to stay in the truck, everyone else to get out and do this next cap. Roland will stay in the truck. Yeah, there's, they're behind us. Hey, four, are you low health? I can build a rep position. You want me to stay in the back seat? You they have the placements up on, uh, near our main, guys. Either one's fine, whatever you want. Let's get out here real quick. One person just to build the half of the other guy's cap. Alright, we got hostile 116. Hostile 116 moving left to right. Uh, Roland, you gotta get out. I'm, I'm out. I'm down right now. You, you need to get out? Get the lodgy out or? Uh, yeah, go, go back yeah. to that other half. I would maybe take that radio down too. It, see if you guys can pick me up. See if you guys can pick me up. That'd be ideal. Whatever, there's one tier due east. We're gonna need someone to stand close, or? Yes, about 30 meters. He was at the side of that building. Uh, oh, right, 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 yep, yep. Sounds good. If you're leaving uh, main, so right, they have some sort of uh, uh, vehicle here to north, north, west, don't go south or west directly. Someone taking a guy here, defense. Jump in, because I, I just got fucked up. I couldn't even get close to the more to tow, tow cap. Well, we don't need it. We don't need to be on hotel six anymore. Start bringing people to the tour cap and uh, Joe man. Put a hab up on uh, build mark. We can get someone to come and build this. Uh, Dillinger. Fuck. Coming. There's a lot of guys over here southwest. Yep. Alright, I'm gonna spawn at the hab that we built earlier and get Hey, in, Chopper, uh, that Chopper's lobby. got gunner. Chopper's got a gunner. Let's talk about that sequence right there because that was clearly a mistake, not just in hindsight, but if I had really been reading the signals of the game, 
better. I, I should have been able to tell that trying to press my luck so hard, trying to get a fob so close to the next cap point would have been a mistake. And uh, the main reason why is because we had such a poor opening, we took so long to get out here that uh, that gave them time to catch up to the other team. As soon as, if you're trying to place a fob down, a radio, and as soon as you put the radio down, you get ambushed by enemy team, that's generally a good sign that that fob is already uh, lost. And someone on my squad had suggested correctly that we should dig the radio up. I did not listen to that. I decided, no, let's try to just force it. it. That doesn't really work in the long run because as soon as the enemy knows where your Lodgy is, they see you trying to put down a radio, they are going to know that that's a point to attack. We don't have any good control over this area at all. There's only my squad, only a few dudes in my squad who are able to control this point. And... Uh, trying to force that so close to the cap was absolutely a mistake. Should have gone up like farther north or just farther away from it in general. We still would have been able to contest it effectively. Uh, and you'll see that this fob does not last very long at all. They're able to take it down. They're able to cap this point, actually. And it, this becomes the point un over which we fight. And if I would have gotten a hab up farther away, enabling the rest of our team to spawn in and, and move into the point, that could have been, we could have, you know, successfully contested it or more easily contested it, you'll see that this becomes a major point over which we fight for a lot of the game. Trying to force your original plan when the game is telling you that the that enemies have adapted to it and that you need to change is, is generally a fool's errand and I should have um, gone a little bit less aggressive with this, whether that's going around or just staying in the mountains or something. But what I tried to do was something that lost our team 20 tickets. Uh, I'm pretty sure it caused one of the, the squad members to quit. That guy who, who drove the truck back, he quit soon after. Um, and I, I always feel bad when someone do, does that, when it's clearly like they were a good participant, they were like volunteering to do things. And that guy was probably frustrated a little bit with the decisions that I made. So something to keep in mind uh, about, not just like if you make a bad decision, that it can affect your you know, the team and the flow of the game, but, you know, it's it's someone else's experience in this game, too, and you're responsible for their experience when you're a squad leader. And so I think I chose poorly here, and um, it did, didn't turn out well, and it made the game a lot harder for us than I think it needed to be. Despite the poor play, we did manage to keep the Lodgy intact. I'm grabbing someone else to help me build, and we're going to take this Lodgy. We can still make another fob with it, get another point of attack with it, we're going to go around a little bit safer route, having learned my lesson from that experience right there, uh, to kind of nestle it deep in the mountains where there's not a lot of people coming, not a good chance of being spotted out, and try to get a different direction of attack on this point, which has just been capped by them and clearly is going to become a, a heavy point of fighting. The other thing is, why do this instead of try to rally my squad and try to lead an infantry assault on the point it's because i'm the only one in my squad who can put down another fob we have eight other people or seven other people not kind of the guy who's in the truck with me who can try to attack that point i'm the only one that can put down a fob so what am i going to be more useful being another gun in the fight that in a point that's clearly going to be heavily contested or being someone that can get an uh, entire new vector of attack for the entire team. I think it's the latter. And that's why I'm choosing not to go on the ground, at, even while I'm directing the rest of my squad to do exactly that. I'm trying to do something else that I think is going to benefit the team more in the long run than the benefit that my gun would add to that fight. Squad 8 observe enemy MG, if you can take him out, please. Just steer northeast. Good job fighting those vehicles. Hold on. We tried our best. Enemy MG to your northeast on that mark I-566. You need, can you take him out? He's fucking pinning down these vehicles. Okay. Well, he's not on a hill. He's like in, in the bushes or trees or whatever. You say that again? They must have a radio down over there. Yeah, they definitely do. But they, they put one down. They got pretty fast caps, honestly, so good for them. Hey, what's the repression? Honestly, I mean, maybe we should go in here. Nah, I'm gonna push. Come back. Yeah, a little bit farther. Oh, 
Well, I can confirm for sure that the cap is, or their hab is somewhere south of uh, the cap. They have uh, enemies pushing German, just FYI. Yeah. Shit, hear me, dude. Lots of enemies pushing our HAB and B6. I don't think there's many enemies on the point at uh, tour camp. Radio's on Charlie, observe. Radio's there, nice. We are marking out enemy radio to the west of tool camp, it's pretty exposed. Yeah, work on that radio. There's also... Oh, well, there's also a hostile IFE about 30 feet from me. <laughs> okay. Alright, it's gone. Okay, he's probably still watching those right vehicles from the north. So it's it's right here. here. We have a new hub going up hey, Dylan, south you're, of Tool. You hear that guys vehicle? Die, spawn on this new one and push into Tool. Dillinger, B, uh, BTR on me. To attempt to do it's right beside us. Alright, alright, I'm coming down. Great work with that radio. Let me know what the status of it is. I'm gonna speed this up a little bit because not too much is going on. My team was not successful in digging that radio up, but it's always good when you can spot one out, especially one that's in a pretty bad position like the one that we found is, is pretty exposed. So that gives our team an ability to focus on that objective. It's on our way to the next point anyway. So it's in a pretty decent spot. The rest of the team asked if anyone's doing Logi runs. I said that I was, but I'm not doing ammo runs uh, to resupply fobs. I generally think getting another line of attack up, another vector of attack up with a new fob is more advantageous than uh, just restocking an existing fob with more ammo. Um, and my team is making a few call outs, I'm letting them know I'm doing this, but I have to take this eastern route because I'm afraid that if I go back the way I came that I'll get cut out. The reason I'm doing another Lodgy run instead of sticking with my squad and attacking that point right now is because I actually don't think we're in a great position to attack this point. And even if we were to successfully cap it, I don't think we're in a great position to hold it with the fobs that we have. Uh, it's pretty tenuous. They have a lot of infantry. They have vehicles coming in. And this t also takes a lot of time to get back to the main base in this particular map. And I know that there's a lot that could happen between now and when I actually get back to the main that would require a team to respond with a new spawn point. And if I were to wait and stick with my team until we needed that fob, it would be too late. So I want to get us prepared to be able to respond effectively to a lot of different ways that the current situation could play out, rather than, again, just adding another gun into the fight. Clearly, there's a lot of blueberries already moving in. There's a lot of teams already moving in. How much am I going to be effective adding a gun to that mix versus getting another fob up? So uh, the same thing happened, and he dropped all his supplies too. There's the pricks uh, cutting out supplies on uh, Juliet 4. So I only realized after I started making this video that the quality of the map is not really good. Uh, but let me explain what just went down through command chat, because it affects the dynamic for the rest of the game. So the first thing that got called out is that a squad was ambushed here and had was forced to panic drop all their supplies by an LAV. Um, so that essentially cuts off this middle supply route, which is the, the easiest way for us to go. The second thing that got called out was that there was an enemy infantry here that cut out a vehicles coming even closer to our main. So that means this essentially this 
entire supply route and everything around here is completely blocked off. And that means that we are going to have to use this Eastern supply route over here to resupply any of our existing fobs, which as I mentioned at the start of the video, this, these roads take a long time to travel on. They're very windy and it's just, it's gonna take us a lot longer to do anything. Um, and that's why I mentioned at the beginning in this particular map, controlling those supply routes can be a super effective tactic. While this is fast forwarding, here's what's happening. One, I'm reminding my squad to stay focused on attacking the next point. Two, I'm reminding command chat that the enemy radio we had spotted earlier is still active as we, my squad was not able to dig it down. At three, I'm asking if there's a squad on the team who will protect our defense point because there wasn't anyone on it and it was vulnerable. Luckily, one squad did volunteer. Sometimes, in these instances, you have to ask a few times or you have to decide to have your own squad do it if no one else volunteers. Luckily, didn't have to make that choice. Fourth, command chat is discussing the extent of the camp on our supply route. And one person in that chat, uh, as well as in team chat, started to say that the enemy was violating server rules by camping our roads out of main. I was pretty sure the enemy team was not violating server rules, which typically stipulate not attacking within a 300 meter radius of a main base. The enemy team was definitely outside of that 300 meter radius, and in my view, they were making fair play. It's not uncommon for a lot of people to think that winning in squad boils down to out shooting the other team. Clearly, that's not true. I'm showing you one of my preferred ways, which involves out positioning the enemy team with superior fob placement. But stopping vehicles from making it to the front line can be incredibly effective in certain maps, and this map is one of them. And you will see some people who feel this is dishonorable or, or somehow not how the game is meant to be played. In my view, you do whatever it takes to win within the rules of the game and the server. I'm going to show this conversation in a second, and my goal in doing so is not to call anyone out, but to show how you can help shape a discussion around pragmatic solutions instead of giving in to despair, which is really easy to do when your plans are going to total shit, which is exactly what's happening to our team. We've been hit by a lot of setbacks relatively early on in this game, and succeeding as a squad leader and a team requires being flexible and adapting quickly to a constantly changing environment. It's really important to cultivate a sense of resilience within yourself when you're playing this game because the plans are never going to go how you expect and out maneuvering the other team ultimately requires being able to adapt faster than they are able to keep up with. Oh, and I don't know what the rules are as far as distance from main to camp. I mean, this is a pretty, that's a pretty common strategy on this. I know it's frustrating, but I'm not sure that they're breaking any rules by doing that. Uh, yeah, they're not. They're not. Yeah, no, it's part of this uh, server. They're allowed to do that as long as they don't get within the yellow radius that I just put on the map. Yeah, that's reasonable. Question is, are we going to do anything about it or are we just going to... Uh, let him do that? Uh, I, I mentioned like a minute ago that I'm gonna grab the VTR. I'm gonna try to do something about it. Awesome. That is like so you got hands. Some servers already. Thank you. I'm taking the no the far east supply route. It's gonna take longer, but it's safer. So the person who volunteered to grab a BTR at main and try to deal with the camp, I think that was one of the most pivotal moments of this game, actually. Uh, when it's one of those key decision points that I talked about earlier, and that was not made by B, that was made by a different squad. And I just gotta say major kudos to that person because that's a perfect example of reacting pragmatically and being solutions focused in a tough situation. Squad volunteering to try to clean out the supply. We can't, we the can't swap them, we can't go after them one by one. We need one to go, we see where they're shooting from, the other one to shoot them. Too complicated, man. So just keep pressing tool. We need more help on this attack. We don't have enough. There's like a squad and a half people here. Where's everyone else? I'm on their radio. I'm trying to dig it down. Great, great. Let me know. Keep me posted on the status of that. <laughs> My squad is uh, defending Chow Man.
camp is really fucking us, isn't it? On the supply route. Yeah, we gotta start throwing yes. smokes and then pushing in. We can throw smokes guy. on the houses, they can't smoke them out though. Like, they have, they've got choppers, so they can just fucking fly over and pick them up. Like, you gotta take these roads if they're just watching, so we'll... Stupid. Yeah, uh, they're both on Sahib and then on my Squad 9 move mark, so... Oh, and looks like they are over there where Squad 3 is at as well. Look, yeah, they have every road. Like, that's, this is main camp. This is not right. It's stupid. No, no, this is literally the point of this map, is to control the supply routes. And whoever controls it better wins. But, yeah, but we are insurgents against people with like you can't control the choppers. Yeah, but we got a two flag advantage in the beginning by being insurgents. This this is just how this, I mean, this map this is like really common situation on this map. We just have to try to figure it out. We're gonna full squad to go fucking hit these back campers. Or these main campers. How to go with that radio? It's obviously really frustrating to get shot out of a Laji when you're kind of in the middle of no man's land like that. Luckily, I'm somewhat close to main, so I'm going to respawn and try to recover it. Uh, the best I can do to help my team is to make marks on the map. I'll call out the, that location to the guy in the BTR in just a moment, and we just have to figure out how we're going to break out of this camp and how we're going to get ourselves back into this fight. I'm cutting out about three minutes here. That's just me respawning, running back to the Laji. No other big developments on the team. Then just fast forwarding a bit, I'm going to pick it up where we discuss how it's gone clearing out the camp. Yeah, we took care of the position on my move mark. I'm clearing them out on this position now. Uh, Sahib, they're probably uh, still there as well. Like I said, it would be pretty good to have a Lodgy, I mean, uh, AA gun go to their main. Thank you. So that, that position's all clear of dudes now? Down. I'm going to so he can try to find the fog rate and I'm, because there was a chopper around here before. Yeah, I'm going off-roading so I can try to burn any rallies that they uh, might Got it. I'm gonna bring. I'm bringing the large truck through that position now. I'll leave you marked out here, Levi Jumman. Good job on the Jumman defense. That looks good. We're capping tool. Digging. It looks like we're digging radio. Is that right? Yep. Over. Oh, yeah, we're capping tour camp. That is great news. All right, we're definitely gonna defend tool. So after we cap, just defend. We're starting to dig the have on tours right now. We also found the radio. Yep, well done. Earlier in the game, someone had marked a the radio to the down. east of Tool. Who did that? And is that confirmed? Yeah, they've been main camping the entire game. game. We're on it sure. right now. We're on it. Can we get a Lodgy up to tour if main's still not getting camped? I'm working on that right now. Copy. Just cutting in again, about 90 seconds, because I'm just driving, nothing happens. Hey, Squad 1, would you be willing There's to- There's another guy crawling around in the bushes, I don't know if I got him or not. Hey, Squad 7, I might be able to meet We're gonna work you guys on, getting a on my Squad set up 3 move mark with a lot of teams. Uh, you wanna start to do, uh, actually, one, uh, pancake? Pretty good chance yeah, that right. the, the oh, I heard him. point's gonna yeah, be Yeah, he's dead. Do you guys wanna meet up? What's the gun? I'm gonna try to meet you. Um, there's a good chance that the next point is over going to be by my squad through move mark. If I can meet you guys, we can... They're on jumping. I'm just going to leave it. I don't really care. It's quite a few. 2.30. Uh, on top of the hill. We might want to get down those radios on Jim. It's too late. No, I I'm out over there. I'm not okay. okay. I'm just telling guys to leave. Yeah, any... All you guys who are defending Jumman, you should definitely transition to attack. I'm going to have my guys defend. No, we're trying to... Like, I don't, I'm not going to tell them to respawn over there just to do that. I'm just gonna leave. Uh, no, you guys don't. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. I'm going to respawn. Respawn to, to attack the next spot. Yeah, seven. Uh, don't don't push your guys in yet. Let me try to meet up with y'all and we can get a little stinky pop up. 
remember how I said that when it takes you a long time to do a logic run, that the state of play can advance significantly, and that can change the decisions that you make when you're on the ground? Well, that's exactly what's happened here. So in the interim period from when I left to when I'm actually in a position where I can do something now with this Lodgy and I have a couple different options available to me, we've had some blueberries get in a more forward position, including this squad in a nice flanking spot to the next flag. We've been managed to capture the last flag using just the uh, fobs that we had put down earlier. We're not in a great defensive position, but I do see that there's a Lodgy truck near the point that we just capped, and I'm hoping that one of the other squads there might use it to get a fob up. That is what happens, luckily. Uh, that's that's a gamble, but it is one that I decided to take. Uh, so I'm deciding right now that I want to get up an attack fob that will help us capture the next point. I'm kind of making a bet that because the last point was so heavily contested, they haven't had time to really dig in on the next point and fortify it a lot or get a lot of uh, folks over there. So I'm tr gonna try to meet up with this squad get up an attack fob in a really good position behind them, and then hopefully start directing the flow of the team over to that next attack point. So in the meantime, I'm telling my squad to explicitly to play defense on the point that we just captured. That's what you generally should do when it's a hotly contested map like this. That if you're attacking and then you take the point, you probably should keep your squad on defense. Too many times people just capture the point and then everybody flows off the point you just captured, which makes for a super easy retake, which is really frustrating when you spend a lot of time and effort trying to take that point. So we don't want to give it up. I'm telling my squad to stay on the defensive. The rest of the squads are going to start making uh, moves over to the next point, and I'm going to work on getting a hab that is actually going to be effective rather than just people slowly walking over from that very first hab that we put up in the beginning of the game, which right now is the closest one. So that's what mission I've set for myself, and I'm going to try to make that happen. Just keep playing defense. Even if we just have this positioning, we should be in a spot to win. We're also working on getting an attack have up on the next point with a different squad, so just hang tight. We might transition to attack in a bit. Hey, can we get uh, infantry tight. support with the tank to move up to Kumbar? Five, did you, did you get lit up at Sahib? Yep. Yep, there's no fucking enemy in Oh my god, these fucking. I really hope we fight like, these assholes. Order's already in 38 seconds. I'll call it in as soon as I get it. He's somewhere east of West 5 and down here. They're just watching those vehicles. That's where they're at. They're somewhere watching all three of those vehicles. Seven, can you have your. Can you make your way over to me with your guy there? Cannot move up. There's infantry around our location. What's really nice about Laji technicals is that they are a little bit easier to drive in mountains and like through rough terrain. Uh, so I can get it pretty far up the mountain. The bad side of putting a fob on the mountain is that it can be hard to find a, a spot to put the actual hab down that's not too steep. Uh, it, unfortunately, it takes me two and a half minutes to find a suitable location. Um, and you'll see also, I take my knife out in doing this. This is a little tip I learned from watching the, the captain videos that I mentioned earlier. This is to help 
uh, in case you misclick, which you'll see that I actually do at one point here, that you don't fire a gun accidentally and give away your position, which would just be devastating <laughs> right now if we were to give ourselves away at this point because we're super vulnerable. So um, eventually figure out a fob location, set it down, and then I'm going to take the Logi truck and I'm going to look to get another uh, more advantageous fob position down from the ones that we have right now. We're getting an attack fob up on upper here. <laughs> hey, we need more Mo's in our body. Can Towards you do me support. a favor and dig the radio there? Yeah. Just dig it down. Yep. Thank you very much. Keep defending tour for now. It seems like we're in a really good spot though. If you're anti-tank, honestly, camping this uh, the road mark with the diamond there, with three diamond, would be really, really clutch. That's pretty much everything they have is gonna have to come through that way. All right. I'm gonna try to bring the blood truck to the move mark. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, there's a vehicle coming through that three diamond area now. If I or no, I'm not what happened? Happened? I can't tell. What? I don't know. Enemy hill is so close. Sit there for like about ever. like 250 meters. Still in weird shit. It's a bumblebee. He's humping the air. We're doing really good. You know, this game is a bit of a, this is a bit of a slog. Squad 8, where are they? We're really, really good here. I'm here to yeah, help. It's the map. It's, oh, yeah, yeah. Not a very good yeah map. this map is so brutal. There was one guy in the north. That's a pilot right camp they had more. Somewhere north west. It's actually doing really good. He might have just be going to site. Uh, it's on bond or whatever. Thank you so much for digging that radio, by the way. I'm going to go to move mark and we'll get another radio. No problem. Just have to hit this fucking fob on L6. Fuck. The reason I asked my squad mate to dig down that radio is because one, they had already found and destroyed the hab that was on that point, and we know from earlier that they had found that radio, so really it was only a matter of time. I did not want to be a position where we lost 20 tickets uh, to a fob that we weren't even actively playing anymore. So luckily he was close, uh, he and he was willing to dig it down. So what I'm going to do is once that space frees up from the fob, I'm going to use it to get another fob up that uh, is a little bit more advantageously positioned to attack both points. So we can attack from a different direction from the fob that we just put up and then we can also defend from a direction that comes from behind them if they come from their main base so uh, one it's just to save tickets and then it's two to get us a hab that's a little bit better suited for the state of play right now okay. yep, on the way. Dillinger that's accurate radio you're spotting out? yeah yeah I'm, I'm checking it out What's up, if you're just spawning, we're on tour camp defense right now. If you're just joining us. Alrighty, thank you. You are a godsend. Hab is outside Merv Tech, you'll see if we're on it. The chopper is resupplying again, and I observe if you're being... Hab is disabled currently. Copy. How greedy can we get? Probably not that greedy. Yeah, I killed infantry about 100 meters from here. So they're gonna be close.
Yeah, a lot of enemies up there. They probably got a pop. Uh, they're arting it. Who's arting what? Uh, it's about three guys there. Uh, uh, northwest of Maiden Upper. And I'm wondering if you will set up next to I'm pausing it right here just to show that the attack fob that we first built is having the intended effect. We can see a steady stream of blueberries coming out of it now and putting a lot of pressure behind them. It's clear there was like emplacements and things and they were able to just come in behind and completely wipe out this like rear defense, which is really, really helpful for, for taking that point. Uh, there is also a nice rally put down by Squad 2, uh, just to the north of the new HAB that's going up here. Uh, you know, in case the rally goes down, now we're able to support it with the HAB, and then other squads can also spawn in on this HAB too, so it's not just on Squad 2 to work off of that rally. So uh, I think the intended effect of these attack fobs is, is working out for us, and we're now, after a really shitty start, in actually an incredibly strong position, and uh, I'm feeling really confident now that we're going to be able to take this next point. I'm fast forwarding now because there's not a lot that's going on from like a squad leader perspective at this point. We have the two attack bobs up and running. We do end up neutralizing the next point, which is huge. Um, I tell my squad to stick on defense until that next point is capped uh, because I just want to be extra safe at this point. Uh, I'm going to see if I can maybe grab some supplies off of some of the back fobs that aren't being used anymore and, and bring them forward to help the team out. But otherwise, I'm just trying to get back to uh, the team now. I know at this point, the game has got to be pretty close to ending. I'm hopeful that we can squeak it out. One thing that I want to point out is I spent a big chunk of time away from my squad. I think in this game... A lot of people think a squad leader should be with their squad, on the ground, directing fire, and I, I don't really believe that. Most people in this game have played shooters before. They know how to move to a location, shoot enemies, that sort of thing. I'm not going to be super effective directing their fire or movement on the ground. Again, I'm the only one in my squad who can put these fobs down. So if you just keep checking in with your team, keep giving them direction, keep reminding them that they're doing a good job, or correcting them if you think they should be doing something different, I think you can be just as effective uh, for that the squad members in their individual movement, and then you, it allows you to be a lot more effective for the overall team. Stranger and Meep, there's some infantry in that area too, be careful. You kill the LAV. Commander, on my position, there's a vehicle I'm literally chasing him with this technical. It's right near Squad 4. Squad 4, there's a Vic driving right into you right now. From the south. If you guys can recover that logic and drive into the move mark. Uh, there's still a lot of enemy outside right of main. Careful with that lobby. Yeah, I told him that. He, uh, he's, he thinks he's the best driver, so. Roger. Yeah, everybody does. Alright, good luck. No! Fuck you! Yes. 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 Fuck those motherfuckers. Fuck them. I'm the best healer in all They didn't the do land. shit all for their team. Good job, guys. Good job. Okay. Get, get nice tanked, job. bro. Just get saying, murdered. I got the most points on the team. Good job keeping that pressure up, that was oh. vital. Good Habs, good Habs. Phew, alright. <laughs> Winning a tight game like that always feels good, doesn't it? I think anytime you win or lose by less than 100 tickets, I consider that to be a pretty close game. Let's talk a little bit about what we, as me, a squad leader, could have done better, uh, and then what I think did go well for us. So, let's start with what didn't go well. First, I had a really, really poor start. That early Lodgy flip was killer. Uh, we recovered, but then still did not get to that point uh, that we initially wanted to for far too long. 
uh, I think it's kind of telling that kind of the rest of the team had a poor start too, because even though I had flipped that Lodgy, you saw so many cars drive past me, I was still the first one to get out to that western point where I had called out in the beginning of the game. Uh, we got that conservative fob down because of that, and that ended up being the game saver for us, I think. Uh, but it was pretty poor beginning and just overall wasted a lot of time. When we tried to get too aggressive on the tour camp point, that was definitely a bad decision and a mistake on my end. If we would have gotten up a little bit more conservative of a fob, we could have avoided the entire scuffle over that point and already been in a lot better position to start. We might not have had to have so much angst going on through this game. I would also say that even though I had told the team that I am not working on ammo supply runs, I'm working on the fob runs, which I think was the right call. What I didn't do was coordinate any supplies or, or ask if anyone was delivering supplies to those attack fobs. Now, luckily, other squad leaders did pick up the slack on that one, so kudos to them. Uh, that is something that I should have done better. If I'm going to make a decision to to not use one of the logistics trucks to, to resupply the team, uh, I need to make sure that resupply does happen because it, it, it is needed, especially for anti-tank, especially when you're insurgent and you're outgunned. The other team has much stronger vehicles. You need to have constant supplies and ammo running to fobs in relevant positions to ensure that you can kind of level the playing field, especially with the VIX. Now, what did go well? We were able to get down really effective fobs that allowed us to contest points that otherwise our team would have been unable to contest. I would think we probably put up the game-winning uh, fobs there. We had the three out of the four fobs in the in the main area where all the fighting was were done by our squad. Uh, we had another squad put in that other fob to the north of the point that we had capped after we had capped it. Uh, so that was very helpful too because that secured the defense on that point. So that's definitely don't want to underrate that. That was a very important fob to get up as well. I would say that our communication with the rest of the team was good, and with the rest of the squad was good. They were pretty independent, although I know in the beginning it was a little bit painful to try to herd all the cats. So overall, pretty happy with how this game went, and I hope this was helpful um, at looking at how you can work through tough situations and, a, and an enemy that's adapting to you and how you adapt to them, because that's a really important facet of this game, and it's, uh, it's one that makes it very unique and also very rewarding to play. I would love to know, what did you all think of this game? What, what went well? What didn't from your perspective? Uh, what was helpful for you to see? What would you like to see more of? Uh, let me know in the comments. And until then, good luck to you on your next games.